Okay, hello you crazy people out there, this is Dragon of Spam, and welcome back to Game Maker. So, this is something I've wanted to do for a while now, but I also kind of wanted to get around to a couple other subjects first. Uh, not because this is going to depend on them, necessarily, just because I kind of figured that I should do them before I forgot about them. Anyway, 3D! Um, Game Maker is kind of known for having very bad 3D support, but it is something, if you've known me for a while, that I like working with anyway. Whether that's because I'm insane, or because it's an interesting challenge or whatever, that's kind of up for your interpretation. Anyway, before I start, a couple warnings on 3D. You're probably not going to make anything like super spectacular that you'd be able to in a Unity or Unreal Engine or anything like that. Game Maker provides next to no built-in optimization for 3D, so all of the optimization is going to be, have to be done by you if you want your game to run at like double-digit frame rates. There's no support for animated 3D models, only static ones, I'll get to that later. There's no built-in support for 3D collision detection, although there are still ways to do this. A couple of people on the Game Maker forums have posted free 3D collision tools that you can use. Anyway, with all that aside, if you're still watching this video, uh, the first thing that you probably want to have is the camera object. And the second thing that you probably want to have is some kind of world object, or some kind of object that's going to be visible in the game. Uh, the camera needs to have a high positive depth, because it needs to be drawn before everything else. Because if you try to draw anything in 3D before setting the projection for that uh, frame of the game, uh, it's just going to come out kind of badly. Let's see... I have this room here, I have one background which is going to represent, well, the ground. Uh, I'm not going to be throwing it in as a background to the game or anything, and I'll show what happens if you do that later. Oh, that's another thing. Background images and tiles don't really work in Game Maker because of the depth setting. And the depth setting more or less kind of acting as the z-axis, while at the same time kind of determining when things are drawn. So, I am going to close out of there. I am going to drop a camera object and a world object in the room, and I'm going to close out of there. Let's see, the first thing that you need to do is in the camera's draw event, and like I said before, this has to be done before all of the other draw code in the game. Uh, D3D set projection, and it's going to take a bunch of arguments. It's going to take the X and the Y position. Uh, you need a Z position, which Game Maker does not provide a built-in variable for, since it's primarily aimed at making 2D games. Let's see. For the time being, I'm just going to make, and this is what I usually do when like first testing out 3D projects, but I'm going to make the camera reside in the upper left corner of the screen. And it's going to have a little bit of height. And the point that it's looking at is going to be room width. So it's going to be looking diagonally across the room. For some reason, when I see people making 3D tutorials in Game Maker, I never see them explain this very well. I don't know if I'm just missing something massive or if it's just deemed not very important because it's almost always the same thing, but the vector for the up direction of the camera. For those of you who have a decent understanding of vectors, say if you've taken a physics class or something already, you'll probably be able to assume how this works. It's the vector for the up direction of the camera, so if you're making a first person game, it would basically be the direction that their head is pointing relative to their feet. If you didn't understand the word of that, that's fine, I think. In almost every game you make, you probably just want this to be 0, 0, 1, which is a vector going straight up in the air. It can be 0, 0, 5 or 0, 0, 500, and it doesn't really matter. Uh, 0, 0, 0, I think, will crash the game because it's kind of a no vector at all. Anyway, these three arguments only really ever come into play if you want to have the camera roll or something, or if you want to have a different perspective that isn't say, having the XY plane, the regular Game Maker room, um, being the ground and the Z-axis being the air. I'll probably be making a video on how to make the camera roll and stuff like that at a later date. So anyway, I'm going to get out of there, go into the world object, <clears throat> go into the draw event, um, write some code, and what I'm going to do here is D3D draw floor, and this is also going to take a bunch of arguments. Uh, X, Y, and Z, X2, Y2, and Z2, so just like any other rectangle, it has a start and an end point, except it also has a Z coordinate, because it's in 3D space. So I'm going to go 0, 0, 0, and room width, room width, room height, and room 0, and room 0, and 0. Uh, the texture ID, I'll get back to that in a minute. A horizontal repeat, and vertical repeat. 
Okay, so I guess we won't get back to that in a minute because these are all kind of uh, related to each other. The texture ID, unfortunately, you can't just draw a background or a sprite for use in 3D. You have to get a texture out of it. If you were to just draw a sprite or a background in here, it would look very, very weird. And because I don't think this video is going to be too absurdly long, I'll show off what happens if you do that at the end. Anyway, you can get the texture information out of a background or a sprite with texture, no, background get texture. This video is not that old and I'm already having spelling uh, issues. And back grass. If you're using a sprite, you could just say sprite get texture, but let's see, I don't have a sprite, so I can't really use that and nothing will happen. And I'll probably get some kind of error or another because I don't have a sprite of this index. Uh, horizontal repeat, I'm going to make this 5, and vertical repeat, I'm going to make that also 5. I'll go over these later too as well after I run the game, but how many times you want to have uh, this texture repeating on the surface, on the floor, or the wall, or the other shape that you're trying to draw, that's how you control that. Now, this is screwing up. Okay, uh, massive brain fart. That wasn't what was supposed to happen. Uh, what is supposed to happen is me remembering this one line of code. Uh, you need all of three lines of code to set up 3D and Game Maker, and I apparently managed to screw it up. But when the game starts, or whenever you want the 3D to launch anyway, uh, you call D3D start, and that will switch Game Maker's rendering method from 2D to 3D. And you can see now, I'm looking at a rectangle from the perspective of one corner uh, going to the other. And I'm actually not that high off the ground. I thought giving uh, the camera a height of 100 would have more an effect, but let's change that to 250 or something like that. Um, you're probably also noting, and I'm going to switch this back to regular Windows because it's a little faster to compile. Uh, you probably also are noticing that it is black, and this, uh, this background is not black. It is definitely green, and it probably should be appearing as green. Let's see, I don't need to go in there, but I need to go into the world, and right before uh, this one line... I need to say draw set color white, and I think you actually don't have to do this if you're uh, if you're doing this little project in Game Maker 8, because I think the color defaults to white, but I'm not sure. You might want to uh, do your own little test on that. Anyway, now everything is working the way I uh, I wanted it to. There's a rectangle which is acting as the floor, and the camera is looking from one corner to the other. It doesn't move around or anything, but I will definitely be getting to moving the camera around in due time. A little more that I want to do. I don't want to stuff too much into one first video on 3D and Game Maker because um, if anybody's watching this, I want to make sure that they get what is going on first and the basics of how to set it up and everything. Like, there's a bunch of other options you can have when it comes to drawing the scene. There's like D3D, uh, set, like fog and lighting and uh, back face calling and stuff like that, but I'll be getting to that later. That has to do more with uh, like optimization, or at least calling in fog does. There is also a D3D set projection extendant function, which takes a couple more arguments and gives you a little bit more control over how the scene is rendered, but again, I'll get to that later. I don't want to, like, kill anybody with too much information at one time. So let's see, I said I'd talk a little bit more about these textures, so I'm going to move that over there for now. If you want the background to have no texture, or if you want the a floor or a wall or a box or a sphere or something like that to have no texture that you're drawing, you can just set the texture argument to negative one, and it won't use it. I think any negative number will cause it to not use it, but I'm not sure. I've only ever tried it with negative one, and there's really no reason to use anything else. And then anyway, the game will instead just use whatever the draw color is, the current draw color is. How about white is the color of the background, so if I use that, you wouldn't be able to see it. But how about orange, because orange. And you'll now see, instead of green grass, just an orange floor like this. Oh, that's olive. I was going to say, that's a really weird looking orange. That's better. What it was doing before, by the way, when it came out black before I had told it to set the color, it was blending the picture with the color of black, so it actually was drawing the grass, so it was just completely dark. If I were to run it now with the color set to orange, it would just look very odd, although I guess if you're going for like a, I don't know, an autumn sort of grass color, that wouldn't be too bad. But anyway, let's set that back to white because it looks better. The horizontal and vertical repeating options, um, if you don't want the texture to repeat, you can just set them to 1, and you will have effectively, you see, very pixelated grass. This is the, uh, 
the background being stretched across the scene once. If you wanted to make it tile, which you probably do, uh, you could set this to a bigger number. And this is now a little bit less stretched in the horizontal direction. And if I were to make this say 10, there you go, it has a lot more detail. Let's see. Another thing I wanted to do, and I'm going to go and import another um, another background real quick. Hang on one moment. And they could have sworn I had a better looking wood texture than this, but whatever. That was what I found on my computer. That is enormous. I need to shrink that down a little bit. Let's see. 64 by 64 should be good. At least what I'm doing right now. And on top of the floor, I'm going to draw a block, and this is going to go from 0, 0, 0 to how about, no, not 0, 0, 0, um, how about 500, 500, that's 5,000, 0 to 560, 560, and 60. Like the floor, it takes the last three arguments as uh, texture information, <clears throat> so this would be background get texture. And I'm just going to have this repeat once because, well, effectively I don't want it to repeat because that would look a little weird. But there's just going to be a wooden crate. And, oh, perfect. Uh, this is just kind of taking the entire texture page and drawing it. So I need to set these for use in 3D. That was another thing that wasn't a problem you had to worry about in Game Maker 8. But uh, given the way that images are stored a little bit differently now, you kind of have to worry about them now. And anyway, you can see that there is indeed a block being drawn at that position. Okay, anything else I wanted to do? I was I said I was going to show you what happened if you like screwed around with some of the settings, but I don't remember what they were. Is it something to do with like changing the uh, the vector of the camera? I guess I, I can do that anyway. Uh, I don't have anything else I really want to go over in this video, so let's just make this camera vector upside down. And you can see uh, we're standing on our heads or something like that. I don't really want to look at that for that long. Uh, if I were to, this would make the view kind of diagonal. And I actually can't, there we go. If you want to have your playable character fall over or something like that. I don't know. But that's what happens if you use different, uh, that's what happens if you use a different vector for camera position. Which I am not really all that interested in doing right now. Let's see, I'm going to get out of there, I'm going to get out of here, and is there anything else I wanted to do? I don't believe there is. Oh, I said I was also going to show what happens if you uh, set the camera's depth to something being drawn after everything else. And it would pretty much look not to... yeah. This is basically a uh, 3D scene being rendered in 2D with no depth, just looking at it overhead. This is the default projection for the 3D camera. It's just looking at the scene uh, as you pretty much would normally in the room editor. Oh, that's the other thing I was going to talk about, like using like backgrounds and stuff like that in 3D and why you can't really do that. Um, you may notice the coordinates 500, 500 are somewhere around down here. And uh, where is it? The block is being drawn somewhere up here and that's because um, the perspective gets flipped when you go into 3D. But that's a minor concern. Let's see, backgrounds. Uh, foreground image, no. Back grass, there we go. And what happens if I were to do this? I also, I do need to get rid of um, this draw floor thing, and I probably should set no the camera's uh, depth setting to above everything else. Yeah, that's what happens when you try to use backgrounds in 3D. It doesn't work very well. Again, because its depth setting is set so far above everything else, and it ends up getting drawn before uh, the camera does, so I'm going to go and get rid of this. Tiles are slightly different. Let's see, I need to go and Allow this for use as a tile set, I think. There. If I were to go and set this tiles and like draw a bunch of them around here somewhere, and that looks horrible because they're deleting themselves. There we go. Note this number here, which I think that's a uh, 1 million, if I can count the zeros properly. But if I were to do this, and okay, good, that's still commented out. Again, depth is all screwed up. If I were to change this to zero, it should actually work. And indeed it does. Although, this isn't a trick you want to use when drawing anything in 3D. 
If you do decide to use lighting or fog or something, it wouldn't react to them especially well. And if you want to use tiles in 3D anyway, there are better ways of going about doing that. So I'm going to go and just delete that. And again, like I said before with the depth setting and uh, that screwing stuff up. I am going to uncheck that as tile set because I don't need it. I'm going to re-enable this because I kind of do need it. And that's it. That's the basics of 3D and Game Maker. I'm probably going to be doing, I'm going to take a while, I guess, at like 10 videos on this. Maybe more if people want me to do more specific things. But for now, uh, if you want to have a look at this project file yourself, uh, link in the description. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Watch more of the stuff I've uploaded, and I will see you all later.